In today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can model Chun-Li, the character from Street Fighter's bracelet. As this is a tutorial for beginners, I'll be sticking with a few basic tools to create the bracelet. This tutorial will make heavy use of extrude, bridge edge loops, and loop cuts. Moreover, this video will demonstrate at least a few good reasons to have good edge loops in your geometry. Finally, while not that important, we'll be using Chun-Li's Street Fighter VI classic costume bracelet as our reference. So let's get started. All right, let's start by modeling the base of the bracelet, the part that wraps around her wrist. So go to Add, Mesh, Circle, Tab, then hit E for Extrude, Z to lock on the Z axis, 0 0.02. Then to select the bottom edge loop, Alt, left click on an edge, and I'll select all the vertices in that edge loop. Hit Extrude, S for Scale, then 0.5. And now this is going to be the part that wraps around her wrist. So let's give this part some thickness as well. So E for Extrude. Z to lock on the Z axis, 0 0.02. Then E for extrude, S for scale, and I'm just gonna wing this one and leave it like that. Okay, now I wanna create the part that will connect to the top. So if we look at this from the side, I'm gonna hit E for extrude, S for scale, 1.05. Oh, I messed that up, scale 1.05, and then grab Z, sum amount, so there's a nice smooth fall off. Then E for extrude. Now, the detail looks pretty good. Our edges look really sharp, but typically you do something like this, object, shade smooth, and all of a sudden, all that detail's gone. You can't tell where where those sharp edges are anymore. So the way I usually fix this is I any, any edge loop that I want to be sharp, I will surround it by other edge loops. So for example, hit Control R, left click, E, drag, Control R, Left click, 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 drag. And we'll do it over here as well. So let me get a better view. Control R, left click, drag, control R, left click, drag, control R, left click, drag, then control R, left click, and drag. Okay, now, our edges are much more defined. They aren't too sharp. They appear rounded. So our bottom is done. So how do we get, how do we create the top? All right, so hit A to select all, shift D to duplicate, mesh, mirror, Z global, G to grab along the Z axis, and we do 0.9. Now we need to connect the two. Okay, deselect everything, alt left click on the bottom edge loop on the top part, shift alt left click on the top edge loop on the bottom part, and then go to Edge, Bridge Edge Loops. Normals all messed up. Select all, Shift N to recalculate the normals on the outside. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to connect the inner pieces, right? It's hollow right now. We want that to stay solid. So, Alt Left Click on that one, and I got to figure out which one. Okay, Alt Left, Alt Shift Left Click on that one, and then go to Edge, Bridge Edge Loops, and now we have a complete. Um, bracelet. Now, if you take a look at her bracelet in the game, there's an intention here that makes it look like there are two halves of a circle clasped together. So let's work on that. So I'm going to select this edge loop. I'm going to mesh, split, faces by edges. So what did that do? So if I take a look at this one and I move it, it, it stays connected. But here, it's no longer connected. See, there's another vertex in the original position. So I've split the mesh along that edge loop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select one of the edge loops and we can see that's going to be the one on the right side because the orange is trailing off to the right. So hit G for grab, X to lock on the X axis and we do 0.01. So we're going to separate these two. So G for grab, X, then negative 0.01. Now to create the indention, hit E for extrude, S for scale, 0.95. Same thing here. E for extrude, S for scale, 0.95. Then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go to X-ray mode and then we're gonna do Shift, Alt, left click. Then again, edge, bridge edge loops. And we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom really quick. We still have that problem again where the edges aren't super defined because we don't have extra loop cuts around the hard to find edges. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that really quick. Control R, left click, Control R, left click, drag, Control R, left click, drag, Control R, left click, drag. Let's do it to the top really quick. Control R, left click, drag, Control R, left click, drag, Control R, left 
click drag, control R, left click drag. And there, now our edges are defined and this looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and just put a basic material on there. I'm gonna turn my light on. I already have cycles rendering set up. I'm gonna go to the camera, zoom in a bit, and then we're gonna go to add a material here. It's new, we'll rename this base. And I'm just gonna make it black, just flat out black. Like that, and then I'm just gonna lower the roughness to 0.3. And that's it. That's the base of our bracelet. And next thing we'll do is work on the spikes. So I go to add, mesh, and cone. And you can see it's pointing up. I want it to point out of the bracelet. So I'm gonna hit R for rotate, X to lock the rotation on the X axis, then minus 90. Then I'm gonna go to top view by hitting seven on the num keypad. And then I'm gonna just grab this up by, on the Y axis by one point, 1.3. And then I'm gonna scale it. I already know what number I wanna scale it to, 0.435. And then I'm gonna look at the back view by hitting control and one on the num keypad. Then I'm just gonna align this by eye to be in the center about there. Okay, so the basic shape of our cone is there. Okay, I'm gonna do something better on orthodox here. I'm gonna add mesh, UV sphere. And what I want is for this point right here to be aligned with this one and also facing the Y axis. So again, rotate X around negative 90. Now I'm gonna scale this by 0 0.02. So I have this really tiny sphere here. So what I'm actually doing is, instead of the cone or the spike converging to a single point, I'm gonna have it be a bit rounded as to where it ends up. It makes it look a much better. That having it end at one point makes it look really kind of flat and cheap, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna go to x-ray mode. I'm gonna also look at our edges. And then I'm just gonna align the endpoints and then the middle edge loop. See how this this edge loop aligns with the middle edge loop of the cone. Okay, cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this edge loop, delete it, and then just I'm basically deleting half it. So control L to select the everything connected and delete. And I'm gonna go back to the cone. And I'm just gonna delete this point. Cool. Now I'm gonna join the sphere and I gotta figure out I'm just gonna do this. Join the sphere and the cone. Okay, and guess what I'm gonna do here? Select the edge loop, select the edge loop, then zoom out a bit, then edge, bridge edge loops. So now I have a rounded point, but it doesn't look quite right. It, it, it looks, it's like it's slanted, then it's stubby. So in order to fix this, select the edge loop by alt click, then just scale it in to make the, make it, the edges look continuous. So select scale in. I'm not gonna do such a great job with this, but you can obviously refine this if you're gonna do this for yourself as well. And then something like that. And so now we have a rounded corner there. Okay, cool. Now get out of x-ray mode, go back to solid, uh, get out of x-ray mode. And now you can see, uh, I'm gonna actually enable shade smooth. Now you can see that this isn't shaded smooth. You can see the edges here along the part of the cone. So we're gonna go into edit mode, go to edge, then re-enable X-ray, shift click to select all the edges and hit control E, subdivide. And I'm just gonna do 12, just to you know make sure that we fix this. Now go back to object mode. And now you can see outside of X-ray mode that it's nice and smoothed out. Okay, the question now is how do we make a bunch of these cones and then make it rotate all around the bracelet? So thankfully the bracelet's already centered around the origin and we have a 3D cursor centered at the origin. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change the rotation axis or the rotation point to 3D cursor. Now, if I hit rotate, it rotates around the 3D cursor, which rotates around the bracelet. So I'm just gonna wing this one. So I'm gonna rotate here, shift D, rotate, and align this one with the X axis. Shift D, rotate, ah, and then we're gonna probably end about there. Cool, now select all, shift D, mesh, mirror, X global. Shift N to fix the normals, because whenever you mirror, the normals get me messed up. Cool. All right, now let's see how this looks rendered. Looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna add material to this. New, and we're gonna bump the metallic up, and we're gonna lower the roughness to say 0.25. And I want this to be not as white, so I'm gonna make it a bit more silvery. And there you go. Now to also just make it look a little nicer, just add a plane, scale by whatever, some huge value and give it a color, new material, and let's give it a blue. Okay, then just push this up so it doesn't take so long to render, and there you go. 
So that's Chun Li's bracelet. Um, I hope you learned something from this. If if anything, you probably know way too more, way too much about extrude and bridge edge loops at this point. Um, but that's all I have this video. Thanks for watching.